Hello guys, welcome back to this new video on absolute convergence of an infinite series. So before I start, I have two quick things to say. Number one, this is a continuation of my previous video on infinite series. So do watch that before you start watching this video. And number two, I have a free quiz for all of you on this topic. So you can attempt the quiz and check how much you have understood the topic. So I will tell you the details of how you can attempt the quiz right at the end of this video. So keep watching. So let's see what do we mean by absolute convergence. Suppose I have a given infinite series summation un. I'm going to say that this given series is absolutely convergent if I take the absolute value of each of the terms of the infinite series and then take its summation. And now if this new infinite series, if that is convergent, then the original series is going to be absolutely convergent. Okay. So now there are a few things to understand over here. If a given infinite series is absolutely convergent, then it definitely implies absolute convergence implies the convergence of the given series. Okay, the one without the absolute value. So if a series is absolutely convergent, it is definitely going to be the original series is definitely going to be convergent. But the vice versa is not true. A given series may be convergent, yet it may not be absolutely convergent. Okay. In that case, we call such convergence to be conditionally convergent. Okay. So now, how do we understand whether a given series is absolutely convergent or not? There are a few tests for that. So we are going to deal with these two tests today in this lecture. One being the ratio test for absolute convergence and root test for absolute convergence. So it's quite like the tests that we have done before when we were dealing with only convergence of an infinite series. The only difference being we are taking the ratio of the modulus terms and over here we are taking the modulus of un to the power of 1 upon n. These modulus values we were not taking when we were simply checking for convergence. For absolute convergence we are going to take the modulus value. So the test looks almost same. Uh, we are going to take the limit of un plus 1 upon un inside the mod. And if that value is L, now if L is less than 1, we are going to say it is absolutely convergent. If L greater than 1, then divergent. And if L equals to 1, then this particular test is going to fail. And similarly for the root test, mod un to the power 1 upon n, if that value is L, now if L is less than 1, then absolute convergence. If L greater than 1, then divergent. Okay. So we are going to use these two tests in this lecture. To do a few problems. So let's quickly take a look at a few problems. So this is the first question that we have. So quickly what we are going to do is try to write down the nth term of this series. So just by looking at the pattern I can see that the terms in the numerator are basically natural numbers raised to the power of natural numbers. Right. So it's kind of n to the power of n. In the denominator, I can say that over here I have 1 to the power 1 by 1 factorial, right? That keeps the, my first term same as 1. So I can see the denominator is basically natural number factorial, the factorial of natural number. So that means divided by n factorial. Now again, I can see there's a plus minus sign alternating. That means I need to incorporate a minus 1 to the power n minus 1. Whenever you have minus in the second term, and so on alternatively take minus 1 to the power n minus 1. So that means when n value is 2 the minus is going to appear. Again when n value is 4 the minus is going to appear. Okay. So let's try to apply over here the ratio test for absolute convergence. Okay. We are going to check the absolute convergence first. So I'm going to write the n plus 1th term here and that's going to be minus 1 to the power n n plus 1 to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 factorial. Now we are going to calculate our limit for the ratio test modulus of un plus 1 upon modulus of un. So let's uh, when we are going to take the modulus 
definitely you can understand that these minus 1 to the power n minus 1 and minus 1 to the power n they are just going to become 1 right because when I am taking modulus the plus minus sign is always going to be plus never minus. So, I am going to get limit uh, this minus 1 to the power n minus 1 is not going to be there and this minus 1 to the power n is not going to be there. So, n plus 1 to the power of n plus 1 by n plus 1 factorial this is my n plus 1th term divided by modulus of nth term that means multiplied by the reciprocal of this term with the modulus value. So, that is going to be uh, n factorial by n to the power n right. So, now if I just try to cancel out a few things over here I am going to get n plus 1 by n whole to the power of n okay. So, I have taken one n plus 1 uh, away from the exponent. So, one n plus 1 term is going to be there. I am going to have a n factorial divided by n plus 1 multiplied with n factorial. So, my factorial gets cancelled and my n plus 1 gets cancelled. So, now all I have is limit 1 plus 1 upon n whole to the power n and we know that the value of this limit is e and e is definitely greater than 1. So, that means by ratio test, now let us quickly take a look at ratio test. If the limit value is greater than 1, we say it is divergent. So, that means we can say that this given infinite series is divergent. So, there is no question of absolute convergence over here, not even convergence because it is becoming completely divergent, right. So, now let us quickly go into our next problem. So, this is the question that we have. Again, we need to write the nth term first. So, let us look at the pattern and try to write the nth term. Uh, we can ignore the first term over here, right, because the first term is not quite matching up with the pattern of the rest of the terms. So, let us take our infinite series. Let us exclude the 1 from the infinite series and try to write the rest of the terms. So, I can see in the numerator, I basically have uh, n factorial starting from 2. Uh, so, I can say that it is n factorial whole square where n value is definitely greater than equals 2 in this case because I am not taking the first term in my uh, series. I am not considering it inside the pattern divided by whatever I have in the numerator. I have 2 times the same thing in the denominator with a factorial. So, that means a 2n factorial in the denominator where n starting from 2 onwards. So, if I put n equals to 2, I will definitely get the first value. Now, I have not yet considered the plus minus signs. So, I need to put a minus 1 to the power n minus 1, right. So, if I take n value to be exactly 2, so that would give me minus 1 to the power 1. So, that would give me the minus sign for my first term. That means when n value is 2. So, that means I have written it correctly. Now, let us try to write the n plus 1th term. That is going to be a minus 1 to the power n, n plus 1 factorial whole square divided by 2n plus 2 factorial. Now, let us try to calculate our required limit which is mod un plus 1 upon mod un. So, if I take the modulus again, the minus 1 to the power n minus 1 and minus 1 to the power n, that is not going to play any role. That is just going to become 1. So, I will be having n plus 1 factorial whole square divided by uh, 2n plus 2 factorial multiplied by the reciprocal of un that means 2n factorial divided by n factorial whole square. So, let us try to cancel out a few things and simplify this a little bit. So, what I can do is I can write n plus 1 into n factorial whole square and n plus 1 whole square as well. I am just breaking up the first term over here. 
and multiplied with 2n factorial i can break my 2n plus 2 factorial in this way 2n plus 2 multiplied with 2n plus 1 and followed with a 2n factorial right and i have another n factorial whole square remaining so what i can see is the n factorial whole square is getting cancelled the 2n factorial is getting cancelled and i am left with n plus 1 whole square divided by 2n plus 2 into 2n plus 1 now i can take another two common from the denominator from the 2n plus 2 and cancel out one n plus 1 term so i'll be having after cancelling out one of the terms from numerator and denominator after taking one two common i will be having n plus 1 upon uh, 2 times 2n plus 1 right one of the n plus 1 term has got cancelled okay so now I will divide numerator denominator by n and I am going to get 1 plus 1 upon n divided by 2 into 2 upon n sorry 2 plus 1 upon n and now if I take n tending to infinity I am going to get 1 by 4 right 2 into 2 4 which is less than 1 and that means by ratio test i can say that the given infinite series is absolutely convergent right it's absolute convergence so therefore i can conclude that given series is absolutely convergent and as i told you before that absolute convergence implies convergence for the given series so that means i can say that uh, the given series is convergent so therefore given series is convergent because absolute convergence implies convergence for the original series right so now let's move on to another question so let's take a look at this question it pretty much looks like the previous one so i'll quickly try to write the nth term first so i can see now i have a variable x where x is unknown it may be positive it may be negative we don't know what x is but definitely it's a real number and it's definitely not zero because if it's zero then all the terms are zero then the question is quite trivial if the entire things are 0 that means it's definitely convergent so obviously we are assuming here that x value is not 0 and it's definitely a, a real number uh, so un is going to be x to the power n and definitely i'll have a minus 1 to the power n minus 1 like all my terms before divided by i can see the denominator is n factorial so now i can do this by ratio test I can do this by Cauchy's root test as well because I have a power in the variable power x to the power n so I, I can use root test also so I am not going to use ratio test over here although it can be done with the ratio test let's use the root test uh, for just for our variety okay so I am going to use my root test which is mod un to the power 1 upon n right so that's going to be the moment i take a mod so this term is just going to vanish it's going to become 1 so i have x to the power n by n factorial whole to the power 1 upon n right so that's becoming x upon n factorial to the power 1 upon n now you might be stuck with this particular part n factorial to the power 1 upon n it's quite easy to deal, deal with there is a very well known limit formula that we can use over here i will just multiply one n in the numerator and denominator and arrange my terms in this manner so basically what i have done is just multiplied in the numerator and denominator with the n the reason being that this 
value in the limiting sense when n tending to infinity then this particular value tends to e okay so this is a very well known formula for limit and this portion x being any real number positive negative does not matter it is divided by n where n tending to infinity so that means this is tending to 0 so in the limiting sense we are getting 0 into e which is 0 which is less than 1 so hence by root test we can say that our given series is absolutely convergent so we can say that therefore given series is absolutely convergent right so it was quite easy so we didn't know what kind of value x had still we can conclude that it is absolutely convergent it doesn't matter whether x is positive or negative but there are going to be some cases where the x value will matter if it's positive then something is going to happen if it's negative then something else is going to happen so let's take a look at that kind of a question so let's try to solve this particular question uh, over here let's quickly try to try to write down the nth term again so my nth term i can see i can write the first term as x to the power 1 by 1 square so that adds up with the pattern of the remaining terms so my nth term is x to the power n by the denominator being n square okay so it's just a little bit different from the previous question if you compare it with the previous question uh, this n in the denominator was making everything zero now that's not going to happen over here because of the presence of n square okay so let's see how that is going to play a role over here again i can use root test or um, ratio test so let's again go back to uh, ratio test so i'll be using the ratio test which will give me un plus 1 upon un so i just need to write down the n plus 1 th term okay and one more thing over here i don't have a fluctuating plus minus sign so that's why we don't have the minus 1 to the power n and all that okay so my n plus 1 th term is x to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 whole square uh, and i should write the mod over here so the limit value is going to be um, mod x to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 whole square multiplied by the reciprocal of un that's going to be a modulus of n square upon x to the power n now since the denominator over here and the numerator over here these are whole squares they can easily come outside the modulus sign so i can write this as uh, i'm just going to cancel some of the x terms the x term here and the x term here so if i just cancel them i'm going to get um, x mod x i cannot remove the mod because i don't know whether x is positive or negative and i have n by n plus 1 whole square now i can put that outside the modulus because it's a whole square so if i take the limit the limiting value of this part if n tending to infinity you can understand it's definitely going to tend towards 1 because if you divide the numerator and denominator with the n it's going to be 1 by 1 plus 1 by n so the limit value is 1 that's pretty easy to understand so all we are left with is modulus x so if you compare this with the previous question the limit value came out to be a finite number 0 and we could easily make our conclusion but here the limit value we are stuck with x where we don't know what's the value of x it can be anything but what we do know is that this test is going to give us ratio test is going to give us absolute convergence if it's going to give us absolute convergence if the value of mod x is less than 1 right because that was the condition if the limit value is less than 1 now the limit value being mod x so if mod x is less than 1 it means absolute convergence and if mod x greater than 1 would imply divergence and similarly over here my 
uh, implies sign should be in the opposite direction that mod x less than 1 that would imply absolute convergence okay but what if x value is exactly 1 then the test is going to fail right the ratio test is going to fail when the limit value is exactly 1 so we need to figure out what's happening when x value is exactly 1 okay so before i go into that i'll just break the modulus over here mod x less than 1 that would be minus 1 less than x less than 1 and mod x greater than 1 that means the remaining portion so i'm not going to break that okay so we are going to have absolute convergence when x is lying in this range we are not quite concerned with the divergence part right now now let's try to understand what would happen if x value is exactly 1 okay so now if mod x is exactly 1 mod x is exactly 1 that would mean x value to be plus minus 1 right mod x1 means x can be plus 1 also minus 1 also so in any case if x value is plus 1 then we are going to write how the infinite series looks like and when x is minus 1 again we are going to write how the series would look like okay so first let's work with x value exactly 1 so when x value is exactly 1 let's see how our given infinite series would look like so if x value is 1 we are going to have 1 upon 1 square 1 upon 2 square 1 upon 3 square and so on so the series is going to become 1 upon 1 square 1 upon 2 square 1 upon 3 square and so on so that's basically summation 1 upon n square and we already know that this is a convergent series right so this is convergent right so when x value is 1 it is convergent okay now we already had that when mod mod when x is in the range minus 1 to 1 we are having absolute convergence and absolute convergence implies convergence right so we basically have that the given infinite series is convergent when x is in this range and also when x value is 1 the series is again convergent so i can just make it less or equal to in this case because when x value is exactly 1 it is still being convergent now it's time to check when x value is minus 1 now when x is minus 1 what's going to happen there's going to be a plus minus sign right the first one is going to be minus 1 in the second one minus 1 whole square minus 1 will get absorbed third one again minus 1 whole cube so a minus will come outside so there's going to be an alternatively plus minus sign starting with a minus sign okay so when x is minus 1 my series is becoming minus 1 plus 1 by uh, 2 square minus 1 by 3 square plus 1 by 4 square minus so on right so now we need to check whether this given series is convergent or divergent now for that we can use over here Leibniz test right so if I use Leibniz test or I should actually express this in this format summation minus 1 to the power n u n is given by something like this because right now I have a plus minus plus minus sign that means if I express uh, the infinite series in this manner then I can say my nth term is going to be 1 upon n square I don't need to take into account the plus minus sign because that is in this part I am only concerned with the un part which is 1 by n square if I want to apply Leibniz test now what were the rules for Leibniz test the un sequence had to be monotonically decreasing and the limit value of un had to be zero now directly i can see that the limit value of un that's definitely zero because limit one by n square that's zero no problem with that now secondly i need to show that this sequence is monotonically decreasing so let me find out the n plus one -th term that's one by n plus one whole square so for monotonically decreasing let me take un plus 1 minus un let's see what happens to this so i have 1 by n plus 1 whole square minus 1 by n square 
if I do a quick LCM, so that's a n square minus n square minus 2n minus 1 by n square into n plus 1 whole square. So that's minus 2n plus 1 by n square n plus 1 whole square. So everything is positive, only that there is a minus sign over here. So I can say that this is less than 0. So that means I started off with un plus 1 minus un. So therefore I have got un plus 1 is less than un, right? If I send the un on that side, I have un plus 1 less than un. So this implies that sequence un is monotonically decreasing. So I have got both my requirements for Leibniz test that the limit value is 0, this is the number 1 requirement and the second requirement, sequence un is monotonically decreasing. So using Leibniz test, I can say that this series is again convergent. So it's convergent by Leibniz test, right? So that means when x value is exactly minus 1, the given series is still convergent. So I can just come over here and add 1 equal to with the minus 1. So that means the given series is convergent when x is minus 1 or plus 1 or any value in between minus 1 and plus 1 and divergent if the modulus value of x is greater than 1. Okay. So I hope this video is helpful. Uh, now if you want to attempt the test, I will quickly walk you through the process of that. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. To start the exam, click on the link that you have in the video description. It will take you to this web page where you need to enter your mobile number. Make sure you enter such a number where you can receive an OTP. So once you receive the OTP, just enter it. And verify your OTP then it gives you all the general instructions that you need to go through and click on next so you will see the exam uh, will be shown over here where you have to read all the instructions agree with the uh, things that you have read the instructions and start the test so your test will start and you will have an automatic timer once you have completed the test I'll just click on save next save next save next and I'll just submit the test now you'll see that it will show you you have answered zero questions you have total four questions and you've not answered anything because i have not selected any option and i'll submit the test so it will automatically generate my scorecard that will show me the score that i have got so i've got zero basically because i've not attempted any question now you'll be able to see the total number of questions the number of correct answers and the number of incorrect answers that you have given and the unattended questions now if you want to check out the complete solution if you have gone wrong somewhere then just go down and you'll get the download app option so just click on that it will take you to google play where you just need to install the application and it'll just take a couple of seconds and once that's done and use the same phone number that you have used before to log in. It will again send you another OTP which you need to enter. So once you verify your OTP, the application opens. Click on the horizontal bars on the left side and you will get the free test. Click on that, the attempted one and then over there you'll see you've attempted the double integration quiz so just click on that and if you go down you'll be able to see view report and so you can view the report and now if you go down below you'll see the view solutions so you can just click on that and you'll get all the detailed solutions